In order to rotate form around an axis, we need to apply our knowledge of ellipses. I first create a cylinder in one point perspective, which will create a form using its radius and rotate it around the center axis. Recall that in one point perspective, all of these diagonal lines are heading back to a singular vanishing point. Although my horizon line is off the page, the slope of these lines indicates to me where the horizon line is. I start with an arbitrary angle, radiating from the center point of the bottom ellipse, with the height of the box equaling the height of the cylinder. I'm creating the 90 degree angle by imagining it as a clock. If my initial line is at 5 o'clock, then my 90 degree angle must be at 2. Then by extending this line back to the vanishing point, I can find the slope of the line on the opposite side. Now, rotating counterclockwise is as simple as taking line B and moving it along the ellipse. We once again find our perpendicular width using the clock analogy, this time at 4 o'clock and 1 o'clock. Then follow back to the horizon line to find our new vanishing point, which gives us the slope of all the parallel lines in this new angle. Each time we do this, we create a new set of vanishing points that are unique from the previous box. Notice that as we rotate back towards 12 o'clock, our right vanishing point moves closer and closer towards the center, and the left vanishing point moves from the center outwards towards the left. So once again, I create my initial line, carry it up vertically towards the top ellipse, find my 90 degree angle on the clock face, and relate each of these lines back to the horizon line in order to find my new vanishing points. And now we'll try this one final time. I then animate it to see if the rotation appears natural. This is an exercise I got from a really great Taiwanese artist, Krenz Kushart. I put the link to his gumroad tutorials in the description, so be sure to check those out. Essentially, the exercise involves panning our camera up and down as we sequentially rotate our box. I'm starting with our camera at the center of the box, with it facing directly at us. Notice as we pan down and tilt the camera up, we start to see the bottom face, and we start to create some vertical convergence. The further downward we pan the camera, the more of the bottom face that we'll see. And the opposite is true as we pan the camera upwards. We start to see the top face, and there's more vertical convergence towards the bottom. Now we'll repeat the series, except this time the box will be slightly rotated clockwise. The further we pan the camera downward, the more extreme the slopes of the diagonal lines will become. And once again, we expose more of that bottom face, and the horizon line moves down in relation to the box. Now we've reached a point in our rotation where we're seeing nearly equal parts of our left and right faces. This exercise, as well as the others in this video, can be a little bit challenging if you're new to perspective. So be sure to take your time, use as many guidelines as necessary, and be deliberate about your lines. One thing to keep in mind while watching this video is that it is in time lapse, so when I'm doing this I'm moving much slower, and I'm taking the time to think out each line that I'm going to be making. And if you're struggling with some of the more rudimentary techniques in perspective, be sure to watch the first four installments of this series. In those, I go into one point, two point, and three point perspective, mirroring planes and curves, as well as using ellipses, and some other very important techniques in perspective. So try to get those down before moving on to these exercises. Now that we've covered rotating forms in perspective, I want to demonstrate how we can use different camera lenses when capturing our image. We'll look at lenses as a spectrum, from short focal length fisheye lenses to very long lenses. The key difference between wide angle and long lenses is pretty simple, the length of the lens. But as a result, the angle at which the light reflected off a subject is different between them. In order for a long lens to fully capture the same subject as a wide angle lens, it must be placed very far away. The wide angle lens, being much closer, captures the subject with very sharp and dramatic angles, whereas the long lens will capture a much more still and steady image. So how does this translate into actual drawing? The key lies in the rate of convergence of our parallel lines. With our extremely short lens, we'll have a very rapid convergence towards our right and left vanishing points, as well as our vertical vanishing points. 
As we increase the length of our lens, the more and more parallel the lines become. As we increasingly lengthen our lens, we approach isometric perspective, which is when our vanishing points are infinitely far away and our parallel lines will never converge. Now I'll demonstrate this effect one more time with the camera positioned a bit higher. A useful resource when doing this exercise is any of the 3D modeling programs. Moto and Maya both give you very good camera controls. Now let's apply this to an actual drawing, so we can see how these principles can be put into action. I'll draw the same scene twice, but captured with two different camera lenses. The first I'll capture with a long lens, placed both far away and above the subject. Often in cinematography, different lenses are used to establish a particular mood. Because long lenses create a flatter image, they're often used to create a feeling of steadiness, or to establish a scene. Also, because the camera is placed so far away, the size relationships between our subjects is truer to form. Now I'm recalling back to what we discussed in the beginning of the lecture, to place a form in a different angle in front of the previous one. Recreating this block out with a wide-angle lens yields a drastically different result. Again, the rate of convergences are going to be much more drastic in a wide-angle lens. And since our camera is placed so much closer to our foreground subject, it appears much larger than its true size. And now I'm recreating that background object, again twisted in a different angle and with a much faster rate of convergence than the long lens. And now that I've finished blocking out the primitive forms, I'm going to fill in with the details of our subjects. You've seen me repeat the same idea in many videos so far, especially the Gi videos, but the key is just to place in your details along the vanishing lines that you've created so far. Adding in the heavy shadows underneath helps emphasize the distance between two objects. And now I'm drawing in a dumpster in the foreground, which appears much truer to its size relationship with the van. Alright, now let's move on to the wide angle shot. Again, follow the primitives as guides for placement of your details, but don't be so committed to them that you're unwilling to break the silhouette. We don't want to make a Minecraft car. I once again add in a heavy shadow underneath to show the distance to the ground plane. And I'm making sure to demonstrate the design of the car and show some of the minor details, such as the cut lines between the door and the hood, the headlights and license plate. And while this isn't a visual library episode, taking note of these details will help you call back to them in the future. I add some hatching on the lower third of the car to demonstrate that it's a different color. And now I'm drawing in the foreground dumpster, which appears much larger than it did in the long lens shot. Alright guys, I hope this clears up a bit about camera lenses and how they can be applied to drawing. If you liked the video, please subscribe. I'll be putting out new videos every week, as well as live streaming every Friday through Sunday at 1pm Eastern Standard Time. And if you want to support the channel, consider subscribing on Patreon. We have a lot of really cool options, like access to the archive of full-length live streams, 
critiques by me, and group lessons. And if you'd like to get more involved with the channel and interact with other aspiring artists, consider joining our Discord server. Alright guys, I'll see you over in the live stream.